Hey all, welcome to Share Trek. This is Raj here. Friends, we have had a very eventful uh, day so far. I've been literally busy looking at all the, the data that is coming out, not only in genomics, but also uh, in the uh, other area where uh, we are talking about HIV-related data for uh, Exition Bio, which is again a really uh, strong prospects for um, uh, going public. Uh, they are doing very well with their therapy, and um, so I'm keeping a watch on that. So it's been busy, but uh, I'm happy that uh, we have finally got a lot of things to talk about in uh, genomics. Today, I'm going to talk to you about CRISPR therapeutics. And in this video, I'm going to describe uh, what uh, the key things that CRISPR therapeutics submitted for, uh, prior to the ADCOM and uh, the feedback that um, the FDA had given to the ADCOM and what I think is going to be the outcome. Uh, so it's all good. Uh, with that said, let's get started. Welcome back, friends. So it seems the proceedings for the day included accounts by patients who were successfully treated using Exacel on how the therapy helped them, how they used to suffer from pain before. So it's a very upbeat section of the uh, ADCOM meeting where uh, this information was presented firsthand. And most patients in clinical trials who were treated with Exacel didn't experience sickle cell related blood clogging crisis for over a year and didn't need to go to hospital frequently. There was only one patient who had a mild case of these crises due to an infection. And um, as far as Vertex is concerned, they have given an estimate of around 20,000 people who would be eligible for its treatment. And um, Vertex believes that Medicaid and private uh, insurers have suggested a willingness to pay for it. So they have been doing their homework in the background. So that's a very positive news for CRISPR shareholders. And um, uh, patients first have around uh, eight weeks of blood transfusions, followed by a treatment to release the bone marrow stem cells into their bloodstream. And then the stem cells are removed and sent to the uh, to uh, CRISPR therapeutics to uh, you know, do the treatment, the uh, editing and other things that they do, quality control. And uh, while that is happening, uh, the patients receive intense chemotherapy. This is the busulfan um, uh, conditioning to clear their bone marrows for, so that when the treated cells or edited cells come back, stem cells come back, uh, they could uh, engraft into those uh, bone marrows and uh, start producing uh, modified um, uh, blood cells. So the treated cells are infused back into the patients, uh, but they have to remain in the hospital for at least a month while the new cells grow and repopulate their marrows. And uh, this treatment cannot be delivered at most hospital, according to Dr. Alexis uh, Thompson, who is the chief of uh, the division of hematology at Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. Uh, and um, uh, the good doctor, uh, Alexis, also consults for Vertex. So that's a disclosure out there. Another issue is how quickly Vertex can ramp up production because each patient's cell must be treated individually in a sterile environment, uh, which is a very, very difficult prospect. And uh, another executive uh, who is a vice president and uh, chief operating officer at Vertex, uh, Stuart Arbuckle, uh, said that he is confident uh, that they are launch ready. And um, he said that he did not expect a huge wave of patients immediately. Uh, and um, he says this is a pretty big decision for a patient to go through. So patients may take time. It's not like uh, it's going to take time to market it. Uh, patients uh, who are eligible will know about it, but they will need to take their time because this bone marrow cleansing using the uh, chemotherapy is a, a difficult uh, procedure and it's going to take a period of time for the whole um, cycle of uh, treatment to happen before the modified cells can be installed into the bone marrow and uh, then the patient can start getting back to normal. So one of the analysts uh, that I read about was RBC analyst Luca Isi, uh, who believes that the uptake of an approved exacel therapy could be slow and expects exacel will take a long time to meaningfully lift the revenue of CRISPR therapeutics and Vertex or their shares. But uh, friends, uh, the way I look at uh, the share prices and the way I understand the market works is the market is projecting forward and uh, trying to pay a premium to get the opportunity share of the future right now. So as far as I am concerned, this is another revenue stream that will be added to CRISPR therapeutics. That is point number one, to improve the valuation of CRISPR therapeutics immediately uh, on approval. 
the second point is that uh, this will be the proof uh, that CRISPR therapeutics is capable of coming with a gene therapy that will be approved by the FDA and uh, that can command a, a position in the market. So that is the next value addition. And the third value addition is this is the proof of concept. And CRISPR already has got uh, uh, collaboration with Viasite and it has got collaboration with Vertex and a few other big companies. So there could be other big pharmas looking at CRISPR therapeutics to uh, get in, in a collaboration. And if you recollect, the marketing head, the new marketing head has been talking about uh, collaborations for uh, candidates which are already in their pipeline. So this is all looking very good. So I think CRISPR should get a real good boost once the approval takes place. This is my personal opinion and not financial advice. So guys, if you're going to invest in CRISPR, don't do it based on what I'm saying, but do it based on your own analysis. This is just me sharing my thoughts as an individual investor. So this is how I'm thinking. So now coming to the ADCOM and FDA approval, we should note that FDA ruled out ADCOM for Bluebird's low cell. Okay, keep that in mind. Uh, so everything I'm saying at this point of time uh, is uh, supposed to be something that you process in a sequence and form your own opinion. So FDA said no ADCOM needed for Bluebird's uh, lower cell. And I have read reports in a trade magazine that uh, before the Tuesday advisory committee meeting, uh, FDA staff had questioned the sa safety testing of Exacel. And in a document prepared for the advisory committee or ADCOM, uh, the FDA stated that Vertex and CRISPR used assay based on in silico tests uh, to find potential unintended effects uh, of, uh, of Exacel but had only limited data from sequencing the entire genome. The FDA staff said that the lack of comprehensive genetic data might make it difficult to identify important variations caused by unintended uh, editing, and they suggested that external experts in the advisory committee should discuss whether the analysis uh, of uh, unintended side effects were sufficient to assess the risk in the intended patient group, or if more studies should be conducted. On the other hand, the submission from CRISPR and Vertex provided data from a pivotal phase one, two, and three trial, as well as a long-term safety and efficacy follow-up study to strengthen Exacel's regulatory bid. The results of both these studies demonstrate that Exacel could uh, significantly reduce severe uh, VO, VOEs, that is vasculo, vasco occlusive events, and hospitalization from these episodes. And another positive presentation that counters this narrative from FDA uh, is that uh, their clinical safety profile for Exacel was strong. It did not trigger serious adverse effects that could be attributed to Exacel. And the one death in the clinical development program was ascribed to COVID-19. So it was not because of Exacel. On top of that, Vertex and CRISPR have also proposed a post-marketing uh, pharmacovigilance uh, surveillance plan. Uh, so if you were to ask me what I think is that, um, I would say that I'm very optimistic that approval may happen. Uh, the need for a therapy is acute. At the, mo at the minimum, I'm thinking a conditional approval can be made. And the fact that CRISPR and Vertex have proposed post-marketing uh, pharmacovigilance uh, uh, surveillance plan fits right into that possibility, which I think is the bare minimum that I'm expecting. Uh, I think that uh, Vertex and uh, CRISPR should be able to get XSL approved uh, on the PDUFA date or maybe even before that. So that's my thought. And uh, personally, my disclosure is that I have 100 CRISPR shares and I'm feeling very good today. With regard to therapy pricing, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. However, given the success of Zinteglo, Camera, etc., which cost a lot of money, I don't think it will be a showstopper for uh, CRISPR therapeutics. But at the same time, it's not going to be a walk in the park getting payers to fork out the full payment. Uh, now it's a waiting game, and tomorrow we'll get a feel of what the market thinks of CRISPR. Uh, I'm bullish. Uh, let me know what you guys think about it. With that said, I'd like to bring this video to an end. Thanks and have a great day. Bye for now.